women that date pro, pro athletes. <laughs> go I'm, ahead, Jay. Go I'm, ahead, Jay. Go, I know you about to go ahead. <laughs> like, <Talk> like, to <laughs> like, here's here's Talk a dynamic. Yeah, yeah, let me go. Here, here's a dynamic of it is that you have to understand that the programming takes a process to unplug. Okay. When you're on the field, and I was a free agent, so the anxiety of, nigga, you got to perform. Yeah, at a high home. level. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. And even if you were a first or second, third, it's still the pressure that you have to perform. Right. So when you come out of that after the season, and I've had to tell so many girls and wives, it's like, well, I want him to do this. I said, do you realize he has to allow his nervous system to adjust that mm. he's not in this environment anymore? Yeah. And by the time he's rest, guess what? It's time to go back to camp. Yeah, Bro. yeah you spend your whole, you spend so much time getting in that mode <laughs> that like it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out. I can feel his energy. Yeah, right yeah. Now. He, said, he said, "I'm, he said, I'm ready to stop traveling. So I'm ready real. to get in the mode." Yeah. Because, because by the time you come out of it, well, yeah. I want you to take out trash. I want you to do this, and don't realize the pressure is that man. I have to keep performing. Mm -hmm. If you're in a contract, yeah, you got to keep performing. And it's like, well, guys, I can't blame a guy that kind of like, I don't got this bread. I'm going to shut it down. Because just think, mm -hmm. you work so tirelessly and, and, and so much effort goes into performing. What up, world? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cosign Conversations Podcast. Something like a round table. We've got some very special guests here. Uh, quick backstory. For those who know, I used to do jewelry. I used to do grills. So some of these gentlemen I don't know, some of them I do know. But uh, me and Jay Barnett first met because I did his grill. Yeah, yeah. I did his, uh, his bottom grill. Uh, randomly walked into the grill shop. Yeah. Did his grill. That's how we connected. Later found out, uh, you know, how much of a big deal you were. Uh, Mike, I think it was Instagram. Mm -hmm. How we met, connected, seen everything you was doing, and it was uh, super cool to connect with you. Uh, quick story, Jayla, I actually slid in your DMs before on some, you know, some, some work stuff, though. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I see you did um, you did a pitch competition. Uh, uh, you hosted yeah. a pitch competition in Dallas, and I think it was maybe with Black Excellence. It was so during, during COVID. It was during, during COVID. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what COVID, it was. Yeah. And, I, and I love what you were doing. And, you know, Cosign's all about, you know, entrepreneurship. Uh, so I love to see athletes and entrepreneurship, man. And uh, my, my homie told me a lot about you, you know, Same. NFL champion. So that's how I know everybody, yeah. or I'm getting to know everybody. So, you know, if y'all want to do, introduce yourselves, and you know, we can go from there. Yeah, so um, I'm Sky. I'm from New Kensington, PA. You know, I signed with uh, my man Mike and Rise, you know, being able to, uh, you know, give me game off the field, you know, try to help build my legacy and build my, my brand off the field. And I feel like, you know, I'm in my first year. Mm. So we're getting that rolling. We're getting the ball rolling with that, you know, big thing soon to come. That's what, that's important too. So Michael Lito, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Rise Advisors. We are a multifamily office for athlete entrepreneurs and uh, blessed to work with young men like these two, Sky and Jalen, really um, helping them, you know, leverage that platform to build a legacy for their families. That's real. Uh, Jalen Smith. Um, like I said, from Fort Wayne, Indiana, went to Notre Dame to college. I've been living in Dallas for about seven years now. I know you love it. When me. I was drafted, yeah, <laughs> going into year eight. So I'm a, I'm an OG, yeah. but uh, you know, just, just just here to spread a lot of game. Um, I'm a sponge. I'm always soaking everything in, trying to learn. So um, entrepreneurship and togetherness that it, that matters, especially in the um, you know being being black men. Not definitely, definitely. Last yeah. but not least. Jay Barnett, man. Um, he's what I think over the past couple of years has become a world-renowned therapist, man, for black men in the face of black mental health, a uh, former athlete. And um, it's exciting to be with Mike, man, as we – I think I'm the oldest in here today, too. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you take that. Yeah. I'm going to let you take that. We're going to head on that I one. You, I thought you you younger than me, Mike. I might be a little bit. Go ahead and take that. You go ahead and take that. Me, man. You say you don't want to finish out there, right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I take that, man, because I, I tell him, man, I don't I don't look as 
as as as young as I am. No, you so, holding it down. Yeah, you holding yeah, it down. Yeah, yeah. So uh no man, I'm I'm excited, man, to have this conversation um and to provide an expansive thought. Um, you know, I was once a uh, you know, former pro athlete as a free agent, but to see, you know, Jalen and, and, and Sky and to see that these guys have an opportunity mm-hmm. To not only just maximize um, their talent, but maximize their life. Right. And as I say, the league don't develop mm. men; they develop talent. Right. So you know they don't develop people, man. And so uh, just to see that these brothers have an opportunity with Mike, and then too that this conversation of black men being able to uh, be reflective of our thoughts and not just what we can do physically, man. So exactly, you know. Um, and, and kudos to you, black man, for appreciate creating it. this space. So y'all, y'all know I'm all things black men, yeah. bro. Yeah, man, I appreciate you know it. what I mean? Yeah. Say less, brothers. They don't celebrate us. No, nah, that's you right. Know, they celebrate how we perform, but they don't celebrate the essence of just not being able to do nothing, just mm-hmm. being. And so I'm excited about this opportunity, bro. Man, speaking on that, I think it's some. It's the condition of how we kind of grew up too, because I grew up in a. I grew up in Killeen, which is like two and a half hours away from here, a military base. And I remember growing up, it was like, if you didn't know somebody in a different neighborhood, you really didn't speak to them. You know what I'm saying? They looked like you, but you didn't really speak to them. You just stay, you know, in your neighborhood, around your people. So I like to see that, you know, as we get older and become a man, like, you can say what's up to you, bro, and as a stranger, you know what I'm saying? You can finally tell your brothers you love them and not really have to say pause or anything after that. Like, if I love you, I love you, bro. So I do respect that, that people that kind of, grew out of that, you know, those phases when they were younger of, you know, I'm going to stay within my hood and not speak to other black men. So we came a, we came a, lot, a long way. So, you know, it's beautiful to see. Yeah. Well, and I, I think a lot of that too, you know, um, as, as I've shared my story, uh, you know, I was a free agent in 06. So, you know, being 26, 27 years old and being out of football and not having the locker room mm. and what we – all fail to realize is how important the community is, right. our brotherhood. And for most black men, we don't see that, you know what I mean, outside of sports. This is why guys will um, affiliate with gangs and affiliate with, you know, uh, hoods because it's belonging. Right. And so for me, you know, when I went through my challenges after leaving um, the league, it was important for me as I got into therapy and, and started researching, I realized, man, no one really cared about black men, mm-hmm. right? They celebrated the black athlete, but it was the man that they had an issue with. Mm. So as long as you had a helmet on, as long as you had a ball in your hand, they embrace you. Mm-hmm. But after that, we all have heard stories of when you hurt, you know, this, this is why guys are afraid to talk about being hurt versus injured. Yeah. And we all know that, you know what I'm saying, dynamic. Hurt is just like, man, I'm gonna push through it. Injured is like, Dude, I might have to sit out a few weeks. Right. So when you look at the evolution of who we become as black men, I look at a lot of what we've had to, uh, we, we've had to uh, debunk these myths that we are just, you know, physical being. Like, no, nah, we emotional, we mentally, like, we yeah. cry, we hurt. You know what I mean? No, so, uh, and, and then too, what, an interesting dynamic that I saw playing ball is that somebody said, Curtis Conway, mm-hmm. played with the Chargers, we was talking, and he said, you could be emotional in the locker room, but you just couldn't express it outside of the game dynamic. Mm-hmm. Like, dudes will cry if a loss of a game, but we found it difficult to shed tears for something personally mm-hmm. because it wasn't embraced. Yeah, I was, I was doing some study in the day and, and um, watching some stuff. And, you know, I think a lot of us as black men, especially when you come from athletes, when we talk about the masculinity of the image of what we have to put on, is that we are spiritually and emotionally malnourished. Mm. So it's one of those things where, like, we malnourished. And so to where, you know, we can't really, we're not being, we got needs that are not being met. And so then what we do is because we're malnourished, because I'm, I'm changing my eating right now, my health, the whole nine, and when you're accustomed to, a lot of the time, for me, it was food, right, in a situation like something that was feeding you can be killing you, yeah, right? And so for me, it was food, but for somebody else, it could be something else. And when you have a void, and we grew up with a void, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, then we just start feeding on whatever is the easiest thing to reach, like, we and Jay going to talk about this in business all the time. 
you never go into a grocery store hungry mm. because you're going to take anything off the shelf. Right. What was you just talking about business, right? Oh, boy, coming to us with some deal flow, but his fee structure too high. Right. We ain't hungry because we got a lot of mm. things to choose from. But when you hungry, you gonna take, you gonna take, take anything. I got a guy right now pushing me, one of my clients. He's like, Mike, I want to look at this deal. I want to look at this deal. He all hype and excited. I'm like, all right, well, let me, you know, take a look at because we've got, we've got a plethora of things to right. look at, you know. And so I think it's just like when we start feeding on the right stuff that God designed for us, this right here, mm-hmm. you don't feel that hunger. You know, and when you got that hunger, I don't think no good decisions come from when you're hungry. I think a lot of that, um, like us as black men being vulnerable with ourselves, um, especially in the locker room, it's a little challenging because it's like we kind of talk with that notion of like check that shit at the door. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Everybody mm-hmm. got something going on, but when you walk into this room, to this, to this yeah. building, you got to lock in on, yeah. on, mm-hmm. on accomplishing the mission. So I think COVID kind of sparked a lot of uh, mental health awareness mm-hmm. and yeah. things like that. So I think it's moving in the right direction, but we still got some work to do. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cause, I, cause feel we like, talk enough. I feel like it's time and place, though. You know, I feel like you can't just walk into every room feeling like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? But... I feel like, like you said, as black men, you need to be open to more spaces where you feel like you can express those. You might not want to just cry in the middle of the locker room. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But in, right in front of your right teammates in the right spaces, you could do that in the receiver room, but not yeah. in the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's basically making sure you have all the necessary outlets. Yeah, you right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got mm-hmm. this space for this. Yeah. You got, and me and Jalen talk about it all the time, it's about balance. You know what I'm saying? It's some things that he do with me and some things he don't. Yeah. Right? Because it's a, you know, different thing, different, you know, people for different things, you mm-hmm. know. But then too, ball teaches you how to compartmentalize. Yeah. Right? Okay. Because just it, it's something I, I was telling uh uh somebody me, Greg Harder, we was having this conversation. Uh, you know, Greg. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we <OG. laughs> Yeah, so so we 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 box and um and we was talking and, and Oh, he was just sharing his story. And I said, because the, the outside world sees that you're together on the field. But I said, you'll be surprised that yeah. a lot of guys in the locker room are not that close. Mm-hmm. Right. Like now, and going back to what you said, we compartmentalize it. When you walk in that locker room and we step across those stripes, like you touch this nigga, I'm going to lay you out. Yeah. But when we get in this locker room, we may not have a, we may not chop it up. We may not have a, a, a half dinner together. But there's a mutual respect. Right. So you learn how to compartmentalize even what you feel. Right, right, right. Because what you just said, I can cry amongst my receivers, but I'm not letting the DB see me cry. Right. Because if the DB see that I got an issue, he probably think that today in one-on-ones that he going to handle. So it's, it's all of those different dynamics that, yeah. mm-hmm. that the outside world don't see that we have to manage. Mm-hmm. And by the time you get to Sunday, you'll be surprised at the guys I work. They are mentally exhausted. Mm-hmm. And so when you get to a, when you go through a 17 week season, and this is this is why for for women that date pro, pro athletes, <laughs> go I'm, ahead, Jay. Go I'm, ahead, Jay. I know you. Listen, go ahead. <laughs> like, <Talk> like, to <laughs> like here's here's Talk a dynamic. Yeah, let me go. Here's a dynamic of it is that you have to understand that the programming takes a process to unplug. Okay. When you're on the field, and I was a free agent, so the anxiety of, nigga, you got to perform. Yeah, at a high home. level. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. And even if you were a first or second, third, it's still the pressure that you have to perform. Right. So when you come out of that after the season, and I've had to tell so many girls and wives, it's like, well, I want him to do this. I said, do you realize he has to allow his nervous system to adjust that mm. he's not in this environment anymore. Yeah. And by the time he's rest, guess what? It's time to go back to camp. Yeah, Bruh. yeah you spend your whole, you spend so much time getting in that mode <laughs> that like it's hard to get out. It's hard to get out. I can feel his energy yeah. right yeah. now. He said, he said, he said I'm ready to stop traveling. So I'm ready to get in the mode. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because by the time you come out of it, well, yeah. I want you to take out trash. I want you to do this. And don't realize the pressure is that man. I have to keep performing. Mm-hmm. If you're in a contract year, you got to keep performing. And it's like, well, guys, I can't blame a guy that kind of like, I don't got this bread. I'm going to shut it down. Because just think, mm-hmm. you work so tirelessly and, and, and so much effort goes into performing. 
I said this man at a church I was speaking to last week. I said as a black man, I didn't feel I was desired until I accomplished something. Mm. Real talk. By women. Because mm. if we were just regular niggas, let's just be real. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> and just think, even when you come out, you still have your mind on how the league judges you. What have you done lately? Yeah. yeah. And nobody thinks about the psychological pressure. Yeah. Mm. For sure. That if you was once this guy and you get to have to transition, there is no pit stop for you to kind of say, man, what does life look like now beyond this helmet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's real. I think that's the beautiful thing of what, what Rise is trying to do. And Big Mike is like trying to speed up that transition period to where, mm -hmm. you know, you can be able to operate like an entrepreneur or, or, or like a businessman mm -hmm. post-career, but you – you can't gain any confidence from it if you don't take any reps at it, if you just mm. constantly focused on ball. Mm. So I think it's just about opening our lens and understanding that it's a time and place for that shit. You know, it's it's time where we got to lock in and it's like, Big Mike, yeah. do what you got to do. <laughs> you and your team, yeah. who you didn't yeah. hire, we got to mm -hmm. ball. But also it's on us to invest that time to learn about this, this oh. shit that matter. Because after we done playing, we got another – 50, 60 years to, you know, to live and to be able to provide. And especially, like, you think about guys going broke, you know, a lot of our peers and stuff. You know, a lot of that comes from you building this cash flow up, you making this cheese, and by the time you retire, you have this lifestyle that, you, that you've been living as a professional athlete. And if you maintain that same lifestyle, but you're not bringing in that same cash flow, now you're cutting into your bottom line. Five, ten years, shit, you broke. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of what you done, than what you done made. So mm -hmm. we got to be able to have revenues to where we keeping that mm -hmm. that cash flow coming in. Yeah. That's gonna build our legacy for our kids, but also we can still live the way we li we want to live. Cause it's it feel good to be able to do something, especially yeah. when you like us and we don't come yeah. from shit. So y'all ahead of the curve because y'all had somebody like Mike. But like in college, my thing is, does you know as a as a college athlete. Do they prepare you for that? Like, what are they teaching y'all in college to prepare you for the NFL, to prepare you to, like, be right. an entrepreneur? They, they develop, again, they're developing the, the, the talent. Just the talent. And you have to think, these white coaches, when Dion said what he said about, take, I want a D lineman that comes from a single parent home. Yeah. People were in an uproar, but we all understand that. Yeah. Because why? Most of those guys are what? Angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These coaches understand that I'm going to use this anger to drive the talent. Mm -hmm. And if I'm using the anger to drive the talent, the anger is taking up so much space. How can you talk to them about money? Yeah, you're not. Because how you see money is centered around your environment. Mm -hmm. So, and if you're in the hood, you get money, yeah. it's like a lottery. Oh, so, yeah. And everybody wants a piece of you then. Yeah. And beyond that, you're like, shit, I'm, I'm buying everything that I've always wanted. So, investment and he comes along hey man i want to talk to you about venture capital's investment like man get out of here bro mm -hmm. i'm finna go get this chain right. he's like you can get the chain but i also want you to think about in 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 Let's the culture chain within the budget yeah <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so i feel like I, I feel like i'm i'm you deal with that with me like mm -hmm. coming in like uh, back to your question like as far as like the college they don't mine especially then we didn't even have money they wasn't giving us money. How stipends? No, yeah, money. yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, getting, getting, deals. I'm getting like three thousand for six months. So hey, it's no. like, you know, you you run through that, and and, mm -hmm. and then it's like now you're in like survival mode mm -hmm. in college. So you don't. You're not, I'm not. I don't care how you're talking about. Like I should learn this. Right. I'm trying to yeah, make. The, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make something bubble. Yeah. So like that's why it is important. I I I got good self awareness to realize like. Mm -hmm. I can't be in that mode all my life, even when I do get some money. So yeah, being with you know Rise definitely helps me, and gives me a, it gives me access to the education to know like this is what you do in these certain situations. It speaks a lot to your character, but I want to know from you from you two as well is, I'm sure a lot of people are coming at y'all because they probably see y'all as yeah. dollar signs. They don't see y'all as a person, just an athlete. So like, how do you decipher who's trustworthy? Like like a mic. Like how did you know that this is the guy to go with? Um, for me, I had a uh, I had a 
college teammate that went with D Eskridge. Mm-hmm. You know, he he went with him first, and right. and like I always trusted him. Mm-hmm. You know, I knew nobody was gonna get over on bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I'm you like, right, all right, you right, you I'm right. Like, all right, so boom, I'm I'm in good hands yeah. at least, like yeah. to my knowledge of that. And then like as I start meeting with Jay and, and Mike. You know, I see what they know. All right, they know what they're talking about. And then we, I keep meeting with them. Oh, these are cool dudes. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can fit in in these rooms. You know, and then they put me in other rooms with people like Jalen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jesse. So I'm like, all right, I'm in the right room. Mm-hmm. If nothing else, I'm in, in the, the right, right spot. Yeah, shameless plug, but that's the power of a cosign, right? Because yeah. your man cosigned him, and you like, oh, I know he good then. Yeah. It, it means a lot when the right person puts you on with somebody. So right. Right. that's yeah. solid. That's real. For me, Mike been my mentor since I was 13 years old. Okay. You feel me? And the greatest thing he taught me was, like, it's okay to think. Mm -hmm. So I've been a very observant guy since I was legit, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, me being the first client at Rise was, like, it's pressure because, you know, I'm the standard, you know, and I got to do right, Right. you know? I got to lead by example. Mm -hmm. Um, But also it's a blessing because I, you know, Everything, every mistake that I done made or or <laughs> every mistake that, you know, Rise has, has made or any type of thing, you know, I'm being able to see the fruits because when these, these new guys coming along and Sky and Jesse and, you know, just to see them doing it, you know, right, right. is just, it's a blessing for me, you know, so I just continue to learn. For real. Yeah, sure. You know, this kind of reminds me, I'm pretty sure y'all seen it, uh, Similar, like, to Ballers. I've seen Ballers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I like the dynamic yeah. that, you know, they had with The Rock and with, uh, yeah. I can't remember his name. But that's what it kind of seems like Rise is. Like, it's like a family. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, Look sure. out for each other. I mean, really, man, it's about, you know, for me, I'm, I'm called to make athlete entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And I'm called to make young men and leaders. And these two brothers and the, and the rest of them we serve, like, these guys are a lot alike. Mm-hmm. These two are extremely aesthetic they, culture. Cre- they creative yeah. culture, and for me, I gotta hold them accountable, but I also can't take that juice away from them. Mm. I gotta let them be them. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so there's a balance between, like, like I, I said the other day, it's not about controlling people; it's about educating people, mm-hmm. right? Educating them, helping them reflect on mistakes. Me and Jalen talked about it in the very beginning. You're gonna make mistakes, but let's minimize mistakes. Let's make hundred dollar mistakes, a thousand dollar mistake, but not hundred thousand dollars, not million dollars, because it's a learning process. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons that keeps athletes where they are, uh, is because they're intimidated to learn. It seems so far away, mm-hmm. right? When you look at the other person who's a billionaire, millionaire, they got these businesses, and you look at yourself in your current state, you're like, damn, I don't even know how to read a balance sheet. I don't understand this. And I never forget one of the things I talked to agents and I had an agent tell me, that's doing too much with athletes. Mm -hmm. It's doing too much. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, it's doing too much. Just let them just do this, do that. And it's like, damn, like y'all the ones putting limitations on them because you don't want to take the effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They they can be a little challenging (laughs) at times, but take the effort to meet them where they are and educate them and help them get there. And a lot of people, Really don't want to do that, bro. But that's intentional too, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's intentional because it, it it keeps them needing them. Yeah, exactly. Going exactly. back to what Jalen just said, what was the first thing he said? You taught him that what it's okay to think. Think it's okay to think and have independence. And so, like one of one of our advisors told me a long time ago, he's like, Michael, you know what I love about your approach? And when you work with your guys, you're not feeding them pain pills. You feeding them vitamins. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because them pain pills is a short term. Yeah. It's a short term fix. You know when you know when you out here and you messing with all these women and you doing whatever. A lot of the time that's pain pills. That's a short term whatever. But when you start actually thinking about long term longevity, you're gonna be seeking something a little different. Mm. You know when you get to that point. But it's just based on what season you're in. Yeah. Mm. No, I, I think it's beautiful, bro. What you're doing, man, because. And kudos to Jalen, man, for trusting you as a black man. man what? And giving on, you bro. an opportunity to go through the My terrains age. with you. Because so many times, bro, we are so quick Come on. to give up on each other. And we'll look at the mistakes that are being made. And we, bro, it's, it's, it's like I, I hate to see us go so hard against each other. Man. And then when the outside come in, 
It's like, oh, we grab his hand. Yeah. Let's sing with him. Let's pray with him. Yeah. It's like, why not? But see, I that? think, but I think the challenge yeah. though with that, with, with him and I, it was, it was always a good vibration, and it was based on principle, right? And when someone entrusts in you, and someone give you a referral, I just had an agent just do this with me. We, uh, we uh, a couple of weeks ago, we signed Matt Judon, you know, with the Patriots, and you know, his agent entrusted in me. My approach is like, yo, look, bro, when you do that with me. Like, I'm going to be dependable and, and reliable because that's my reputation. That's my word. I'm going to under-promise, over-deliver. But a lot of people, I think, when they, based on their principles, they don't may not take that that serious. Like, they're trying to get a quick come up. They're trying to do whatever to get here. But when you're in it for the long term mm -hmm. and longevity, like, you're trying to, we ain't trying to run a sprint. We're doing, a, we're doing long distance. We're trying right, to go to right. marathon. marathon. Then you're going to approach things, you know what I'm saying, a little bit different. But then your approach, too, is also as a father. Very much so. <laughs> yeah. You caught him at 13. And, yeah. you, you know what I'm saying, you mentor. And black men, we don't have mentorships. Mm. I tell, bro, I don't follow no man that don't have no mentors. I'm sorry, because I want to know who, 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 you, who you following. Right. And so when you think about as a father, his objective is not to make the son like him, but the objective is to show the son parts of him where he can see himself to be better than the father. And believe it or not, the OGs won't give a lot of us that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go here. Why do you think that is? They man. missed their moment. Like from an ego standpoint? Not necessarily from an ego standpoint. Two, two, two dynamics, and I'm going to go clinical for a second. Okay. If I miss my moment, it's hard for me to look at you and celebrate your moment. Mm, I see what you're saying. And, and, if, and, and if my moment wasn't grand, I'm looking at this young cat in this moment, getting his money, doing his thing, mm -hmm. because I look at who I once was, mm -hmm. and it's hard for me to appreciate who he is today. Mm -hmm. So I won't give him wisdom. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is look at the OG. Look, my work is working with guys who are out of the league now to help them to work through their issues. Right. And part of the work is getting them to embrace who they are now. Man. Now, I don't care what you did 10, 15 years ago. Who you are now. And I have to bring them out of the Al Bundy syndrome. You know, mm -hmm. you watch Married with Children. Al was always bringing up his old trophy. I don't care about who yeah. they were. Who are you today? So you have that dynamic. Mm -hmm. And then you have the guy who fumbled his moment mm -hmm. that now struggles with his own internal resentment that keeps me from giving you wisdom, sound advice, leading you to the next. Mm -hmm. And so there's so much healing that has to take place as individuals because money is a small portion of it, right? right? But it's also a reflection of what is going on inside of you. So a lot of what you do for them along just advising, it's also fathering yeah. that we never get. Bro, there's, there's guys that I could, if I call their name, you'd know them, Hall of Famers that are still struggling with daddy issue. And these men made a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. And it's difficult for them to move from where they were because I wasn't father. I got coach, mm -hmm. but I wasn't father. Man. And so what Mike does is you don't have to be someone's father biological, but it's what I give you. It's what the father gives the son that allows him. I don't want to go to church, but Mike know how to get down. <laughs> But it's what Abraham gave his sons, mm -hmm. right? It's why Esau tricked his brother, because he knew the power of the blessing. And how many of us as sons did not receive any blessings from a father, from an uncle, <laughs> from, you know what I'm saying, the OG of the neighborhood? Yeah. So you just out here. Yep. Yeah, and that can be tough. That, that can be tough on, a, on these professional athletes, because a lot of them come from great families, right, good people. But... And I mean, y'all can speak to this, but man, this might not be y'all situations, or it might be some of y'all peers that y'all have seen. But when you feel like maybe you didn't get what you wanted from your mother, your father, uh, family, whatever, like fully, like you know, fully, like yeah. like you know, Oprah had a great book out. It's called "What Happened to You," mm -hmm. right? It's about not people always say, "What's wrong with you? What's right. wrong with you?" No, it's really about what right. happened to you yeah. as a child. It could have been how you was treated, you know, whatever, whatever. But then now that I got the bread and I got the fame. The same person that didn't do for me. Now you looking from yeah. me. You see what I'm saying? And this is not you, but it's everybody. And really, how do you really feel inside about that? You're not going to vocalize that. But really, how do you feel about the fact of like, I don't even fuck, I got my full due portion. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm responsible because I've made it here. And then when you start learning business and you start learning about your bottom line and your cash flow and your finances and you start looking at I'm 20 something, I'm 30 something, I'm 40 and I'm, I'm, I'm in my prime. We in our prime. And I think about my guys. I'm like, when they get to my age and beyond, they got another 40, 50 years to live. So when a kid starts getting educated, what he didn't know, mm-hmm. far probably more educated than the people, it's like, yo, like I ain't got it like y'all think I got it because y'all not really equipped to understand it, nor probably do you even care. Mm-hmm. You just want your portion. Yo, you know, man. so it is a cha- <laughs> yeah, it's a challenging real, situation, yo, bro. Real. Yo. It's, it's, real. it's challenging. I, I told you I was older than you, Mike. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I tell you, you just told, yeah, I'm older than you, man. <laughs> but you know, I think it's I think it's challenging, man. And it's like, how do we stretch this thing, dog? And how do you how do you get people to understand? Let me just get right. Let me get right, and I got everybody. Because once you get to a point when you got it right, you can you at a place where the well is 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 so plentiful. It's like boom, 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 boom. But they gotta, you know, you can't expect someone to understand what they don't know. And you just kind of gotta get there. And then when you get there. If they still hanging around, you know what I'm saying? Then it's just like it's a lot going for it's a lot on gonna fall off. Right, yeah. for sure. Yeah, for oh, sure. sure. <laughs> but you but you're doing it with, with these two guys, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, you know, um It's still challenging. It's still <laughs> but but <challenging. laughs> talk about it, smooth. Talk about it. Especially like the closer they are to you. Yeah. Come on, really? family? Yeah, yeah. Just just it don't so, even have to be family, it could be friends too. Just did, did did y'all did y'all see that that uh new song with Jonah uh Lucas? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Bro, y'all gotta watch it, and yeah. it's what y'all just talking about. Yeah. It's um, the homeboy gets famous, and then the, the the best friend is congratulating him, but then it turns into resentment. Mm. So it's like a one end, bro. I'm glad you eating, but then it turns into, well, you know, I'm out here and I'm not eating, and I feel like you should give me this so I can eat. So. You know, you know, I told you I like to call that um, it becomes the weight of tra- being a trailblazer mm. mm-hmm. because now you break away and you are, you know, because I mean? because sometimes, man, it's a, it's all it's like you're on an island by yourself. But it's mm-hmm. just, and it's more so of like, man, LeBron did it right, bro. It's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of dudes. Oh, talk it's about a lot that, of Jay. Let's talk about that. Of, excuse my language. A lot of motherfuckers that, <laughs> that really try to do that shit, but LeBron did it. He's Man. the example. So what? So what uh, but I feel like that's a credit to LeBron's right. circle more than right. him, though. Yeah, that, no, that, 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 that part. He, that part, he, Scott. He was yeah. he was around dudes that was solid. Awesome. I'm like, all right, Bird's gonna need yeah. this. Bird's gonna need that. Uh, yeah. all right, so and, and, and they was willing to go learn. That's what I'm yes. saying. Yeah. And, and really bubble like, <laughs> yes. And that, but and regardless, that, too, yeah. that, that that niggas want to go learn. Yeah. They don't want to. Because it's like, no, nah, Jalen, no, nah, give me the 20 bands. And you like, I'm going to give you the 20 bands, but you need to go to school. Read these boo, three boo, books. Read these yeah. three books. You're like, <laughs> no, nah, give me the 20 bands because really I want to go turn up with the 20 bands. I don't want to learn because now me learning means I got to sit down for two years. I just think we really don't want to be on that island where we'd have made it, but mm-hmm. this shit really don't matter if it's just us that made hey, it. So how, what's that, good. what's the real yeah. strategy and tool to help? But here, the right, the right motherfuckers around you make it, and you know, to your point, LeBron had the people that they wanted it themselves. Yeah, too, yeah. Because, because so. as much as like we that's break good. off and do like it becomes an island, that weighs on us too. Like that's yeah. not, don't nobody want to be about themselves. Yeah. But what I think, what I think makes it difficult though, bro, is I think we were just talking about it before we jumped on air. Yeah. Everybody can't make it to the promised land with you, and I think what happens to these young cats to get bread in their early twenties is you know how they be talking. Like you, my ace forever. Yeah. I got you. I got you. You done made all these verbal promises when you was young, whatever. So now you done predetermined. Who going to make it to you with the promised land? And it's super early. It's like Jalen would say, Mike, it's honeymoon stage, right? You meet somebody. It's like, yeah. so you done made this commitment already before you done let the person show you. So, and, and, and so, so that's like, Definitely so, make, you so, already so, made so decision. We, we, we done came, we, we done came <laughs> in and hey, hold on, real talk. How would y'all like, we yeah. come in the training camp, right? Why the hell we having training camp and why we competing if we done already made a mind up in week one? Who's starting? Me. <laughs> We didn't already made our mind up. We going to the Super Bowl, <coughs> but but did you imagine Sky scoring in the, in, in the Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe not. But let it play out. Yeah. Let right. you find out. 
I you know what I'm saying? I think Tyler it makes Perry it talks tough. about that. Me, Tyler Perry talks about that. He talks about seeing people in different seasons, <laughs> and you have to see them in a different season. Yeah. And to your point, I would say like me going from being, you know, uh, an athlete and now being in this mental health space, this doctor in healthcare. There's nobody around me that looks like me. You know right. what I'm saying? And me and Mike right. talk about You're this isolated. Often. Like you just, isolated. Yeah, that's what and I'm saying. It, and, and it is a lonely space because what happened mm. is, and I'll tell you this, mm. and I remember when I left Green Bay and I was playing in the arena, the locker room, people don't realize that, that more guys are lonely in the locker room than anything. You'd be surprised, for those that are watching, you'd be surprised of the guys who go home at night and just sit to themselves. But to the outsider – we have this team camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is that, like Scott said, is you start to kind of bring people in because you don't want to be alone. Because there is that weight that comes with like, dang, you know, it's what me and D talk about, right? You got to go back home and go around the family. It's like, hey, I'm the only one that's, that's doing something. You know, I'm, you know what I mean? And, and it's a weight. And I think the world don't really consider us as men to be as in depth with our feelings, mm -hmm. they just think, "Oh, this nigga got bread. He good." Yeah, nah. I've been on like I mean, on a, definitely on the lower end than y'all, but I've been in that situation too. I went overseas to work as a contractor, nineteen years old, making six figures. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When I came back, like I said, I lived in Killeen. Um, everybody else was just working warehouse jobs. So every time we went out, they were like, "Oh, KG got it. <laughs> Yo, he, he he overseas. He got it." <laughs> So at first you're like, yeah, I want to make sure my homies are good. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all was with me in high school. Then after a while, it's like, man, every time I come home, it. it's always KG got it. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm overseas in a war zone, five months by myself with no women, working 12 hour days, nobody hitting me up, checking on me, making sure my family good, and these sons. So it's like, bro, I got y'all, but I can't get y'all like that. I got a daughter to take care of. I got a business I'm trying to build. Like, there gotta be some some middle ground where you can still take care of the homies or help the homies, but you're putting yourself first. And those are kind of conversations I want to hear that y'all kind of have with your people, if y'all have them. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing for me is, and like some of it is, is it, it make me feel good when I, mm. you know, when I, um, what is it? What's that, what's that word called? It's the syndrome. The, uh, oh, oh, saviors, uh, the saviors, saviors complex. complex. Oh, yeah. Saviors complex. Saviors complex. Saviors complex. Messiah yeah, yeah, yeah. complex. Yeah, so yeah. I so I I naturally have some of that. So yeah. I got to be mindful of like it's good, smooth, going off of my my in, making impulsive decisions and shit like that. It's something I had to learn right. because you know at the end of the fiscal year when we going through these budgets <laughs> and it's like you <laughs> this red, this red. Okay, yeah. all right, I, yeah. you got to look, you got to look in the mirror, and that, that's something I learned at a young age is just being able to. To take accountability for shit, whether it's good or bad. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of what I. What do. was that like for yeah. you, Scott? I'm, I like I said, this is my first year. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, young boy. I'm going He's through, going through it. I'm going yeah. through that. Young boy, he in the midst of it. We're, real. East, we're going through the numbers, <laughs> uh, and I'm like, I do. That's what. <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot. I'm like, okay, I'm not doing that next time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. On, like you, you start to see like where you made mistakes and what could be tweaked and like. Is in like you understand why you did it, but like then you then you like have to process the whole the like the the what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? So so you got to take it for what it is versus what you know. You and know, it's that. it's and it's cool because these two are visionaries. We call these guys they visionary athletes. Mm -hmm. So for both of them, they don't I don't have to come up with ideas. They don't lack ideas. They don't lack communication skills. I just got to help them organize and execute their visions. Mm. They're going to come with it. They got the gift. They can walk in the room with anybody, make something shake, but then I got to help, you know, organize and execute. And so smooth a call, be like, yo, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm about to close this deal, Big Mike. Go ahead and finish this for me. I'm like, I look back, I'm like, smooth, you, you remember you spent this on the, yeah. we, ain't, we ain't got this. Then he like. I can't do what I want. Well, he started moving different. He like, hold on. I'm ready to build this. I'm ready to build yeah. this. So then he's just like, but when you can show them that, right? When you do this, you eating your own thing. But at the same time, they got to feed themselves on what, you know what I'm saying? What they, they, they work really damn hard, bro. Balance. You know what I'm saying? It's the balance. Being able to see it is my favorite thing. Like, cause some, like you said, I'll make yeah. decisions just on some, yeah. that's how I'm feeling at the moment, but it might not be the right decision. Or it mm -hmm. might not 
be time for that decision. You know what I'm saying? So, like, being organized and, and, and having it, like, the real numbers in your face yeah. versus, like, it coming off of, like, a, a impulsive, emotional, yeah. you know? Yeah, what, what, sure. what was that like for you after the Super Bowl? Like, <laughs> yeah. no like, sure. like what? Like what? Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you weren't thinking about nothing. Oh, yeah. Nah, yeah. <laughs> you were turned up. <laughs> yeah. This look, look, I'm coming <laughs> <early>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <came> from, <laughs> look, look, I told people, I told oh, people on the team, leave this boy alone. Yeah. He gonna yeah. act a fool for at least seven days straight. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it was, it was, it was fun. <laughs> it, was, it was super fun. But Ricky I also here, know, bro. I also know, like, all right, maybe I'm doing too. <laughs> like, like, I, I get that, I get that self, that self timer. Yeah. Once I'm like, all right, it's it's time to it's time to wind it down. Like yeah. uh, next yeah. year, we gotta go to next year. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it, it was definitely, it was definitely a lot of you know pulling pulling. There was a lot of pulling from from each way, and just me feeling like I deserve certain things. Right. You know? Like you said, like you getting it. stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah getting for, stuff you yeah. never had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's balanced though, man. The fact that you said yeah. you got a timer, an internal oh, yeah. timer, yeah. like all right, let me dial it back. Facts. And a lot of guys don't have that, so that that's good. That and even know. and even like the. We was talking about the communication. Like, I'm starting to like. I just bought this watch. <laughs> the first thing I did, I'm I'm going back and forth with the jeweler. Like, oh, that's mine. Give me that. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> let me call Mike. Let me see Mike. <laughs> let me see what Mike think. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, it's just being able to use my resources versus, oh, I got this, mm -hmm. and let me. It's mine. I'm gonna do it how I want to do it. Yo, being smart. able to trust trust mm. Mike and his team to to handle stuff like that for me. Kind That's of like up. he's acting as like our CEO for mm. our enterprises. Yeah. For mm, yeah. Sky Sky Capital Management. Yeah. yeah. Feel me? And nine but, enterprises. But we the owners. We make the decisions. Right. But Damn right. when you don't gotta go through that shit by yourself, mm. man, it helps tremendously. And when you when you have one of my one of my things is like I heard someone say the other day we was talking to my team about, you know, people in the industry doing what we do. I was like, it's good. Competition yeah. is good. Always been an athlete to do whatever. It's not about the formula. It's about, I had a coach say one time to me when I was playing ball, he was like, man, I'll give another coach the exact workout regiment, the same plan, but they're not going to be, they're not going to be willing and to do the work that we do to execute it. Right. It's not about the plan. It's about the service. Mm -hmm. It's about the culture. It's about what you're doing. And so for me, I want to build a culture where these brothers right here, they buying companies together. Mm. They supporting each other non for profits on a tax right. Yeah. It's it's synergy. It's what you said. We together in the locker room, but we separated mm. outside of it. Mm. Why are we not collaborating? Why are we not uniting? And you see LeBron doing that. You see that why, you know, again, I'm a LeBron fan now. Same. My dog named <laughs> yeah. LeBron. Tolerate no but, slander. But, here. but <laughs> the thing about it, when people talk about Jordan and them and them old school cats. They always talk about how they hated each other and the Pistons. And, you know, you got you got Isaiah Thomas and Magic Johnson just making up 40 years later. Years, yeah. But when you see, you see uh, uh, you know, LeBron and D-Wade, and then you even see Draymond and, 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 yeah. and Bron Wedding and what, they like, yo, we buying businesses together. Yeah. We doing this. Like, what's the, <laughs> what's the point? It don't, it don't really logically make any sense. Like, they deprogramming uh -huh. what's been programmed. Man, and just to watch, what's the kid name? Um agent for uh clutch sports oh. Rich Paul. Rich Paul. I, I think bro that that is one of the most beautiful story i've ever seen man to watch absolutely this kid go in of course he wife folk mad and i'm glad they mad uh but to see this young black man go in and learn the business Say of the game mm -hmm. to set these guys up for life man mm -hmm. and to do all these deals and to help these guys to understand the business and the organizing their life is beautiful, bro. Like I, I, you know, I, I watch my family members who play in the league and just, you know, just seeing like what their life is now in their fifties. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so just to see how Rich has set these guys up, endorsements. You know what I mean? Partnerships. You know, and and helping them to understand, man, the business of sports, not just sports entirely. Because yeah. we grew up in an age where niggas just was trying to get to the league and just yeah. wanted to play. Like, but nobody was talking about the business of it as you were doing with these guys. Mm -hmm. The partnership, that way, when these dudes in their 40s, they chilling. But, Jay, so you you known across the country. You endorsed by Bishop Jakes. You endorsed by Charlemagne of Breakfast Club. You've been all that stuff. But what what you accomplishing coming up in August? As of August? 
Oh, Dr. J. Barnett. Yeah, you're going to be Dr. J. Barnett. Yeah. So that is what? That's education. education. That's learning. Yeah. There's levels to this. Yeah. I think the fundamental thing with these guys, like these two, their peers, that have worked their asses off their whole life to get to the league, and you think that's the pinnacle, they train for that. There's a training. Mm. If you don't train as an entrepreneur, you don't mm. train on how to lead your family, and you feel uncomfortable, what makes you think it's going to last? What makes – if you don't go get the doctorates – Oh, no. just, be, just because you're good in football don't qualify you. In no. business, you got to put the same level at some season, the That's effort in it to do that. And if you don't, why would you think the results would be any different? My, my high school coach always said, he was like, there ain't nobody that just comes to the game and just pop out. <laughs> everybody, like everybody, when, when, it's, when it's crunch time in the game, you sink to the level of your training. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's how, mm -hmm. that's when the real stars show. That's what, that's what it is. So at the end of the day, you got to stop trying and start training. It's all yeah. about the preparation. When you value preparation, my own team, when I'm talking to people, I'm like, yo, bro, you ain't got to be the most talented, but are you preparing, bro? That's the longevity. Your talent will get you there, but your character and your training keeps you there. You know, I look at his regimen. I see it. He developing his. He's like, yo, Mike, now I got to do this. After year one, I got to do this. I'm working on this. He's mm -hmm. he thinking like, but when you just so in the moment and you can't see no, mm -hmm. <laughs> but when we first met, Mike, and you told me how your guys read, I oh. was just like, I said, y'all, yeah, I said, this dude finna build an empire. Mm -hmm. Elaborate on that. What you got? Him? Huh? Like the you got book, him. the book that you have, you guys read. Oh, Psychology of Money. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, but they read all kinds that, of books. Yeah. I said, these guys finna, you know what I mean? Uh, but, yeah. I mean, just listening to to, to where these guys to sure. speak. <laughs> and let me tell you something. Man, this bro. dude gave me a book to read. <laughs> But I, but I, I wasn't ready to read it yet. Uh, uh, it's called "The Power of Subconscious Mind" by Eckhart Tolle. Oh, you talking about New Earth? New Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. And it's just talking about awareness and okay. understanding your ego, but not identifying with it. No. Um, but when I first opened it up and I tried to read it, it just wasn't the season. Right. And I was a little discouraged by it. Yeah. Um, I, had, Oprah ended up coming out with a. Oprah and mm -hmm. Eckert, Eckert Tolle, they end up coming out with a podcast, and he sent it to me, and I listened to it, and I said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe like a, two years later. Yeah. yeah. And at that season, I was, ready to, I was ready to read it. So it's an education portion that come with it, too. But he's not overpowering or overbearing about us mm -hmm. uh, gaining knowledge. He just wants us to be open to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. You're talking about putting reps up. Like, you know how y'all do it on the field, but I'm like, what reps are y'all putting it off the field? And I'm seeing is reading these books, listening to podcasts. Uh, what else y'all got, got going on that'll keep y'all mentally strong in business, entrepreneurship, as you know, as you gain to go higher in success? I mean, you know, we we, we create space, whether if it's Zoom calls, okay. like so, like a quarter. We, we, we try to do it like once a quarter or twice a year where we got Zoom calls. Um, we got management meeting for these guys when we do a report with everybody okay. from their accountants, financial advisors, agents, to where that that process in itself is about decision-making, accountability, but that's business and education. Mm -hmm. So now Jalen told me one time, he's like, bro, I've been on the sideline watching y'all run my business. Now I want to go do it myself mm -hmm. as far as, what, you know, because he's been watching, he's been right. learning so he can do it. And, and Sky going to be the same way, but I just don't want him to do it prematurely. Gotcha. I want him to learn a little bit and observe before he step out there and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of do it. But then we got our athlete enterprise symposium that we do annually uh, here in Dallas, Jay's speaking at it. Uh, Baron Davis is speaking. Anthony Tolliver. And what we do is we bring top-notch investors, entrepreneurs, and the athletes together because it's about building an ecosystem. Right. It's about building an ecosystem. I don't want people just to ask for their autographs, but then you don't want to give them their number or access to their deals. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we asking for a lot more. This dude, when he signed his uh, contract with the Cowboys – his second contract, his big one. I'll never forget him looking at Jerry and going, all right, let me get some of that deal flow. You know what I'm saying? Like, the contract is yeah, cool and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know yeah. like you know the owners of the Chiefs live in Dallas. Yeah. They from here. You know what I'm saying? So, like, all those people, you know, it's like, let us get the real, the real stuff. And um, I think these guys are, man, just in the process of their embracing of learning and right. growing as human beings. And uh, they're going to be they, – they, I don't think they realize – I think Jalen yeah. is over. They're going to realize oh, what they're going to do. Oh, these dudes are going to be amazing, bro. Yeah. I mean, these guys, you, you couldn't have found two better spokespersons, man. I love their energy. 
Not fair. Because, um, you know, when, when you look at where this NIL thing is going, you know what I mean? Somebody better Boy, get I to wish East that Coast. shit was around when I was <laughs> in college. Boy, who you telling? I would have played early. Uh-oh. Uh, Notre Dame, I would have. I got about three M's. <laughs> so I know there's no there's no blueprint, but we talked about a little bit like who's everybody's like favorite athlete entrepreneur. They ain't got to be currently in the you know playing, but like you look back at it, like who's y'all individual? Who's y'all favorite athlete entrepreneur? Oh, I'm by it. Well, I'm I'm Bron. Bron. Well, Bron is yeah, Bron's number one. Mm-hmm. But but I would say secondarily, I don't think that's fair. But I would say like Magic. Oh yeah, killing. You know, like like uh. Yeah, magic is the next one that comes to mind. Magic. I like um what's his name? Junior Bridgman? Junior Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Junior Wiseman, Junior Bridgman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Uh restaurant franchise okay. owner. Dude made like he made like, I think eight hundred, I think his salary for seven years in the league, uh NBA was like eight hundred thousand or something mm-hmm. like that. And he ended up Growing, he ended up um, purchasing ch- uh, chilies, a bunch yeah. of a bunch mm. of chilies and restaurants, and his net worth is like over four hundred million right now. So Dang. that was brilliant, just to, for him to maximize on his relationship. Coming off the bench, coming off the bench, coming off the bench, <laughs> off the bench bro. Yeah, it was crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, coming off the bench, man. Yeah, that, that's real. That's real inspiration. Yeah, for sure. So Shaq's yeah. a good one too. Yeah, oh, Shaq, Shaq, Shaq is Shaq, a monster. Yeah, yeah, Shaq's yeah, a monster. Sure. I've been really enjoying his pod. You know the. The, 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 the speaking stuff he been doing. Oh, no, I ain't, I ain't hip. You ain't hip? No. Yeah, he been doing a lot of, like, podcasts and speaking engagements okay. where he been talking real, real transparent just mm-hmm. about his life and his accomplishments and his adversities and all of that type of shit. It's, it's a different perspective. Okay. Well, you I'm got a festival coming to yeah. Dallas. Though. Well, Fort Worth, I think. But yeah, Shaq doing a festival out here. Yeah. He, he what? He's doing a festival, music festival. Out yeah, he here. bought a crib out here and yeah. everything, too. Moved mm-hmm. out here, y'all. Yeah. It, speaking of the music festival, like, me being in the locker room with Pat and you know Travis yeah. Kelsey, like that's inspiring too. Just seeing how they how they maneuver off they the access, field. Yeah, 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 what they got access to. Like last time we was in here to Dallas, I'm I like I'm like yo, bro, like you, what's up with the uh, Mavs tickets? Mm. He probably sent them to my phone in like seven minutes, no cap, just <laughs> right there, I'm mm. right behind Kyrie, <laughs> and, mm. and and just the the access and pool that he has. And and Trav, I like how you know I I, I probably relate to it a little bit, you know his, his way he's doing it more, like uh, during during the draft he had like yeah. the, the the Kelsey jam yeah that was fire and that was that was lit went, man he was yeah I was in there I was in there <laughs> he was like a it's like he's like a real life rock star and mm. and and like he gets treated like that and 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 he he handles it so well because he's not like. He don't act like a rock star, like as far as like the 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 bouginess or right, like right. you know he's real down to earth. So I I love how he carries carries himself. Watch y'all why, why don't y'all share a little bit about you know both of y'all. Uh, are we talking about like you know why y'all do what y'all do? You know y'all y'all education all this stuff. Talk about what y'all building. I mean, we talking about everybody else, but y'all building some pretty cool shit yourself as far as yeah. whether if it's production, you know, in the community, whether if it's Venture capital restaurants. I mean, y'all doing y'all doing some pretty cool stuff in y'all twenties. For sure. Yeah. Um <laughs> being humble. Don't be humble. No, yeah. no, no. I yeah. threw you the uh, loud. Yeah. Well, I mean, I yeah. s- <laughs> definitely started uh Minority Entrepreneurship Institute, mm-hmm. which is an effort to close the economic and educational gap that exists in this world today. That's what's up, bro. Um my purpose be that's really my purpose beyond athletics. I'm trying to help people that look like me. Mm-hmm get the access and get the resources and get the, the financial funding. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a lot of people that look like us that have amazing ideas, right. you know, yes. but don't have the, the access that we have or the capital yeah. or, you know, getting help putting together them strategic execution plans and, and, oh. and shit like that. So my biggest thing is like, okay, how can I, how can I help there? Mm-hmm. So like yeah. um, over the past five years, we've invested – like one point three million dollars into twelve companies, okay. black, brown, Latinx lot. companies, um, minority women as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as on the for profit side, trying to grow my enterprise, 
I'm in a lot of things right now. I'm wearing my, my yeah. shades right now. I got to get, get you some shades. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got some red ones for you coming out for the right, season, man. gang. Right, I ain't going to lie to you. You had a pop shop yeah. right here too, right? Called, yep. So yeah. it's called Clear Eye View. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my, my eyewear line. My co-founder, Jamal Robinson. Mm-hmm. Um, my best friend is a, is a part owner as well, handling production and sales. Um, nice. Charles Gaston. But we're doing some amazing things. We signed up. We signed a, um, We partnered with... Uh, a 100 year old company called Xyloware, uh, a lens company, production company out of New York. So uh, we partnered with them on our optical side. We're in 250 um, iMart Expresses right now. Um, in September, we'll be in 250 Sam's Clubs, just helping people be able to see, see clearly. Mm-hmm. But also, I'm about, I'm very aesthetic. I yeah. think I look damn good in some glasses <laughs> too. So it's about style, it's Not about good. quality, but it's a, it's affordable as well. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. everybody ain't trying to be paying three, four hundred dollars yeah. for no, no good pair of glasses. So that's the biggest, you know, the biggest dynamic that, you know, that I got going as far as, um, you know, with my business and some restaurants as well um, as a franchisee. Oh, yeah. So I'm doing some stuff. We, we learning. Learning. Yeah, I'm at the I'm at the come support because my daughter, 15, yeah. like last week she got her uh she went to the optometrist and said she needs some glasses. She sent me yeah. a link to some products for like 450. Mm-hmm. I said, girl, yeah, no, let, let products, me tap man. you in, bro. I got you. <laughs> I got yeah, you. I'm I'm trip. Uh, but also see, uh I read somewhere you invested EOS too, right? Invested EOS? Yeah, that was two uh, books over here. That's um <laughs> top my one of my top three performers. Oh yeah, yeah, in investments as mm-hmm. far as return or return on return on investment ROI. Oh, you, you looking five ten? Yeah, yeah, five ten X. But yeah, EOS is an operating system. Mm-hmm. Um, over over fifty thousand companies use this system to run their businesses, mm-hmm. and it's all about um, you know really just engaging and making sure the right people is in the right seat, mm-hmm. uh, making sure that you. You know, running your business correctly. Sure. Um, so I, I I love that the the um, it's it's be, the the company the the family that um, the Flyer Fly Group was a private equity company purchased purchased the company out of they're based out of uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. Um, so just definitely thankful to be a part of that. There's a book called Traction that you guys should read. Got it right yeah. there. Sure. It talks about um, EOS. I got sure. it right there. So quick story about that. Um, uh, my mentor, Ray Salinas, he was uh, an investor in his tech company that I was doing marketing for. He uh, he sold his company uh, for 18, 20 million, started another one, sold the same for 18, 20 million. And he was bored and he like he wanted to help other entrepreneurs. So he ended up getting certified uh, wow. for EOS. Implementer. So yeah, Implementer. So, yeah. Implementer, yeah. So now he's a, 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 gets into business coaches. Yeah, yeah. So that's what he does. And I'm like, man, so you need to go ahead and be on my board. <laughs> to yeah, help yeah. me grow and scale this thing but yeah he bought me traction uh and then after i got traction i started getting what like what the heck is eos yeah. to yeah, get yeah. more familiar with it because i yeah, use yeah. traction for my organization get my yeah. team together i yeah. took the quiz in chapter one failed horribly and i was like oh, yeah. man, i gotta get it together yeah so, that's what's nah, up that's a dope nah, and sky man i want you know sky i can say man he was talking about kelsey you know and stuff but yeah. sky man he's like a creative genius bro mm. so Cold like brand, if you right? if you look at if you yeah. look at his ig you look at his movement you know, it's no different. It kind of correlates with the way he run routes. He just real shit, you know, real crafty and whatever. And so, uh, you know, Sky is doing a lot of dope things with his with his boys back at the crib mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh in the community that he's already started doing. He can talk about that. But then he going, you know, want to build his own production company, all that okay. kind of stuff. So, yeah, you're going to tell him about yeah. it. Yeah, I was really in the, in, the, in the stage of just building the foundation of everything. Mm-hmm. But... The grand scheme of things is kind of like what you said, bro. Like just giving that, giving that uh, resources to people that have these crazy ideas. Like me, I'm not the only one, right. you know, feeling like this. So yeah, like as far as like the, um, I got an event actually on what's it Saturday, okay, for in the, in the community back at the crib, and um, it's kind of like just a community day. I feel like when I was growing up. You know, we had we had like it was called community days, and then like I feel like I was like fourteen, it just stopped, mm-hmm. and like it just got weak, weak as hell at the crib in the summer. So was it like what was it like growing up? Like it was everybody in the community just got together. Everybody's barbecue. going to the corner. It's like a carnival. Like the, we got the games, block you party, got the, all of that. Yeah, type. block party vibes. Yeah. You know, you want to get fresh. You throw your fresh forces on. <laughs> yeah, you go, yeah, you go down there. Yeah. You know, 
it was just like that type of t- type of vibe, and it was like for like three days, four days. Okay. And and it just went away for I don't even know why. It just is it they just stopped it, but. I'm trying to kind of like bring that back. feel back, and and we had a we had a good one last year. It was it was it was real good, great turnout. So second and year doing it, yeah. Second year it's okay. gonna be it's gonna be even bigger because I'm com- I'm coming back bigger. Okay. So yeah. you know we partnered with Wingstop. We got Body Armor. Okay. You know it's it's like a basketball tournament, but I got the kick, we got a kick we got a community kickball okay. game like DJ you know, all DJ all going crazy. Yeah, right. We got bouncy house face yeah. paint. We got girls doing lashes. Oh, and hey. on the street, you win it with the girl doing lashes. Yeah, that's hard. You need a twenty-piece lemon pepper. Yeah, facts. You know, all, all flats. I all flats. Yeah. Gotta have all flats. <laughs> yeah, so you know that's a little bit what we got going yeah. on right now. You got now. a clothing brand too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Before your eyes, I had to. Um, I had I had to. Uh, we we slowed down. We had a lot of momentum coming out. You know, when I was coming out of college, but then you know we had to get the legal stuff right. So. Oh. I was kind of slowed down a little bit, we're, but we're building that back up too. It's it's like my brand, like we, me and my friends, we call it, you know, before your eyes is like our brand, mm-hmm. and it's a clothing brand, but it's also like we we'll throw events okay. as well. So event production, we, but we, we'll definitely had a close there. Okay, that's what's up, like pop up shops type stuff. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's a little a little entrepreneurial spirit, man. Because to give y'all a quick story, so when I started Coastline, that was my main thing. Um, I used to work for the magazine, and it was a hip hop magazine, so it was all music. But I'm like, man, these artists are, I love music, but these artists have people behind them that's helping them get to where they are, but they didn't want me to interview the whole team. It was just the focal point was the artist. But I'm like, man, if we could learn how this artist became who they were through the people behind the scenes, it'll make for a better story. So I say to my capital, started co and I'm like, man, even when I get to the point where I'm running interview athletes, I can't keep up with Bleacher Reporter or you know ESPN, that's not my lane. You know what I'm saying? They could highlight what you do on the field. My thing is, how can I get, a blueprint from y'all that I could share with somebody 17 and like, man, you know, I want to go to the league, but while I'm in the league, I want to start, you know, I wear line, a clothing brand, uh, a multimedia production studio. So after them hearing y'all story, they'll feel more inspired and, you know, motivated mm-hmm. to do that. So I definitely appreciate y'all time sharing y'all story, having this conversation. I know it's going to go crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. And I know it's going to inspire somebody. You know, this isn't a conversation we have every day. You know what I'm saying? Five black men, success, everybody's successful in their own route. That's important to share. So I definitely appreciate y'all, you know, for sitting with us at Cosign Law. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, no I'm doubt. looking for a new mentor, too, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm looking for a new uh, new therapist. Oh, man, I got you, bro. Therapist, man. No, yeah. facts, though. I, <laughs> no, I, <really, laughs> I ain't even no, clean. Mental health yeah. care. I've been, I've been looking. Yeah, really. no, I got y'all brothers, man. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. You ain't going to find nobody, bro, yeah. that, you know, we talk, you know what we talk about? Relatable, incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. Dr. Barnett is sure. credible and he relatable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He gonna keep it real. So, yeah, yeah. got a lot to him. People got a lot to unpack. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah man. And uh, I, I just think again, man. I uh, man, when I came, I was a free agent, man. I didn't get drafted, and I just remember, you know, um, you know, this is mid 2000. You know, there there was no Mike Lito. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no Jay Barnett. Like you know, and back at, back then. You know, if you went to talk to somebody, they didn't look like you. Yeah. You know, uh, when I went spoke at the clinical summit for the league back in 2019, they had 25 of the 32 team therapists there, and 20 of them was white, and then the rest was like females. And so, and I had to tell the league, like, how do you expect these black men mm-hmm. to talk to some old white lady? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what encouraged me, man, to say, I love being an athlete. But then also, man, I understood yeah. what it was like. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be a voice and be a safe space because we all know just certain things you're not going to say in them rooms. Because mm-hmm. yeah, sure. be like, oh, you should talk. Like, nah, because you, you already. <laughs> like, yeah, like, you won't even say it loud. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Because you like, man, you ain't trying to let him know you hurt. Hurt, let him know. <laughs> Talk to him. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, man, you ain't finna take this up top, man. Because that's what's going to happen. And, and it happened to yeah. my best friend, man. You know, he played nine years. And, you know, his dad passed when he signed his big deal. And I was working with him at the time. And, and uh, like, he struggled. You know what I mean? And then my other boy, I signed a, a big deal. And he was going through something. He was blowing 
and he was just going, this is before, you know, they've kind of relaxed on him. And basically, man, they he lost a lot of his bread mm. because what they did was just they said, well, you unstable, so, you know what I mean? He was out the lead, and he had just signed, like, a $100 million deal. And they took the part where he talked about being depressed, mm. and, man, they used it against him because, you know, he shut it down. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, couldn't blame him. You don't have to sign a hundred million. So man, my 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 advocacy was not only to just be an advocate, but also I know how to lead work. They only mm. respect letters. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I went back to school, that you know, sense. and put myself through that because I'm like, nah, I don't want to come as an no advocate as a former player. I want y'all to respect that. I'm not talking because they'll look at former players and just like, yeah, yeah but yeah. no, nah, I put in the work for this. Yeah. So Doctor. I can tell you, I know exactly what these guys are going through. You know, you looking at what you gave them, and I'm yeah. looking at what they have to deal with yeah. since you gave it to them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. That the weight, the anxiety. You know what I mean. Every every guy in the lead battles with anxiety. You know what I mean. Yeah. It's the fear of like, damn, I the can't pressure get hurt. too high. Yeah. No way you can't. The pressure yeah, is the pressure too high. No way you can't deal with it. Got to be on ten at all times. You know, and and what I have to tell them, I said, just think if somebody came to watch you at your job. Yeah. Millions of people watch you. Them. Millions well, of people even, watch them at work. It's yeah. not even about the people that's watching them at work, bro. It's about the expectation of their families and people close to them too. Like sometimes it's crazy, like the amount of pressure. Like I gotta be on when not to talk to them, when to talk to them. Mm. I can kind of feel it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? When I yeah. learn each guy, and I kind of know it's like okay, let them boom boom. But sometimes people that are close to you have good intentions, but a negative impact. You know what I'm saying? They'll be like, they just, and they coming at you, and it's like, whoa, hold on. Do you know what he going through in yeah. his head? That yeah. He got oh, that was that was cats hitting me up, bro. Like, Jay, bro, man, these niggas, I'm about to go out for warm ups, man. Niggas hitting me talking about they need some bread for rent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These, yeah. like, my dude is hitting, he's texting me and saying, yeah. bro, I'm getting ready to go warm up. He's like, and I'm telling him, bro, don't respond. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, but then, you know, the part going back to, you know, the guy, people come and watch you at work, you think about it, you sit in the stands, you tweeting, you posting, and we have to deal with that pressure of how you feel about how we perform. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes to your job at AT&T and sit there and watch you, <laughs> and you make a typing error and be like, yeah, nigga, you made that typing error, now what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all that shit is pressure. Mm -hmm. And then, two, you can't respond. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was so proud of this boy, man. I, we had conversation this year. This nigga right here, bro, I was so excited because, you know, Sky came into the league. He had never did punt returns before. I remember. And then, I know and, and, and then they put him in punt returns, and he was struggling. Now, he a fool at the receiver. He going to eat. He going to yeah. be the number one receiver this year next, you know, next to Kelsey. I got no question. But they put him back there. He a dog, though. He like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And he was, you know, he was struggling. He was going through it. And... And then when I talked to him on his mindset, I'm touching base with him, and he just like, nah, nah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm taking ownership, it's whatever. Mm. They gonna have to go through these lumps with me though, shit. Like yeah, I'm, no, I'm no. back here learning that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's he real. Like, I'm learning this, you know. <laughs> so real. it's just like that's how you find out about somebody. And I remember we had that conversation, and then to see his climax in the Super Bowl, yeah. like where he got to, was like, oh. yes, you know what I'm saying? Everybody can't make it through that shit. Oh, uh, facts. That For not real. even the Super Bowl, but like the AFC Championship. When yeah, I, that when I, caught, when I, my biggest play was a punt return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I catch like, you yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was that was just a that was the biggest confidence booster for me. Like knowing like I could I I can I don't know why like I'm thinking like why am I dropping these like yeah. why like I can catch like why am I <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, it's all mental though. Mm -hmm. It's all mental. I'm back there scared. I'm hoping he kicks it through the through the uprights. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. even want him to. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm mm -hmm. back there just just thinking like, what if I drop it? What if I drop it? And I'm dropping it. You know. So, like you say, every athlete, deal, every football player, if you're out there, really is dealing with anxiety, and and uh, and it is a lot of pressure. It's like seeing, you know, you I can't even be on Twitter now. You know what I'm saying? I can't go to Twitter because I'm a, you know, want to say something or you type your name in. And just just smash <laughs> yeah. over with. I don't even. Oh, got, yeah. It got to the point where I didn't even have to type it in. They're tagging me. I got, <laughs> I, got I got 75 <laughs> notifications. <laughs> of, you suck. Basically, I'm like, all right, all right, like let me. I deleted the app literally for like 10 weeks. Yeah, you have to, man. Cool I mean, you, think about, you think about no. how 
you think about the weight, you know what I'm saying? I love KD. It's a nah. dog. But just to think that he created, you know what I'm saying, a fake page to Burn comment. Yeah. Bro, mentally, yeah. that's weighted. So mm. kudos to you, bro, for saying, like, I ain't even finna look at it. I'm gonna delete it. Yeah. Nah. And because you go back, you know, there was no social media early 2000s. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So you Bruh. think about the pressure of social media, your family, and if you got a girl, you got a wife, or whatever, and you got to keep it together. You got to keep it yeah. together. What Bishop got Jake's? You. What Bishop Jake said the other day when you what? when a man ha when a man sad, when a man happy, yeah, <laughs> when you got to like, we, you, you, you got to come to work the same guy you every time. The same yeah. got to you know, or you're, or you're just going to get to you. It's going to really Bruh. break. Come on, bro. Oh. So <laughs> that's that's why I I I, I have man. Uh, you know, and just hearing these guys speak, man, it, it, it blesses me, bro, just to see their sound, man, because nah. I don't, you know, as I tell Charlemagne all the time when we talking, I said, bro, I don't care about public success. It's great. I want guys to be good privately. Right. That when they lay their head on the pillar, man, they got peace right. of mind. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? That see, you, takes a lot of that's all that matters, bro. Peace of mind, bro. Yeah. That, that's important, and that's why, you know, um, when I have my meeting, you know what I'm saying, with the, with the NFL exec here in a couple of weeks, is is that I want to be that person for these guys to create a hub and a safe haven for these guys, man, because nobody really knows, man. Because, mm -hmm. you see, the world is, they look at the stuff. Yeah. Like, that's a byproduct of the, of the, of the work that these guys yeah, have put in. in. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you get a few weeks off, they probably go hang out party, but then... Your mind is like, all right, nigga, you can't, you know, you got to get back in the yeah. training mode. Mm -hmm. And you never get to rest. It's a year-round job. <laughs> you never get to rest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so you think about that, man, never having, being able to rest and, you know what I mean? Because it's it's that thought like, mm -hmm. dang, if I'm resting, this other nigga over here working because it's, that that's the game. Yeah. Like when I got brought in, you, you got brought in because it's like, this nigga's on the bubble. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the nature of it. Yeah. And that That's within real. itself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And just yes. to think how the front office talk. Oh, this yeah. nigga all this bread, man. I mean, <laughs> bro, I, bro, I, I mean, I'm sit, man, and I listen to these people, man. Yeah. And that's when I realized, and I was telling Mike, that's what made me go back and get this document, man. Because if nobody's at the table that looks like us, nobody advocates for these guys. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why I, I was I was the first to say, like, I don't understand why y'all testing for weed. Yeah. <laughs> These guys need to smoke. Yeah. It's the only thing that's gonna allow their anxiety to be calm. What else you gonna give them? Nothing else. Come on now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Mm. Yeah, and taking, then and, 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 and then taking everything out of yeah. that pain. <laughs> yeah. And 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 I'm gonna tell you when it hit me, bro. My good friend, Kendall J. Cox. Played for the Chargers when he was in New Orleans, and because he had been on Celebrex for so long, mm. it had in heart, enlarged his heart, mm. and he had to have a heart transplant at 36. Dang. Dang, yeah. To cope with the pain. Mm. So when I'm looking at a guy smoking, you, oh, he's smoking, yeah. and Stephen ain't still the way. I'm like, bro, do you realize how? And just think how now they have these guys playing on Sunday. You got back door and play on Thursday. Mm -hmm. They don't realize though. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. You're not <laughs> going to. I just you, think they don't really care. Care. Exactly. Exactly. That, that they part, they don't care. No, because they gonna, they gonna give us that tour to all the. <laughs> Take that pain away. Go on, get ready. Mm. You know, a couple hours before the game. Because it's that about that bottom line. Yeah. And you look at the deal they just did with Amazon. I don't even want to get it at. I mean, mm -hmm. and like now, how they switching up, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you can play on a Sunday and play on Thursday and back this new setup and then turn around and play on a Thursday again. Whichever uh, team that at that time feel that they have like this spot, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's how they interchange so it now. That, yeah, yeah, like every team don't get a yeah. Thursday game this year. We like, play – our schedule is crazy this year, like that. Gotta like, be. Yeah. The, the swing is you it's know, crazy. Yeah. And it's and it's like, but going back to the pressure point, like you said, like sometimes like it'd it be a lot when it catches up to you, but like I feel like 
I'll be liking that sometimes, though. You know, like the... Yeah, the, it becomes a rush. Yeah, so it's yeah. definitely... Yeah, it becomes it, a rush. And it, but it, like, tricks you a little bit, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you get a rush from it, but then you got to deal with the after the aftermath of what got you there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, so like I, 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 definitely, I definitely go through that. Mike, sure. and, Mike and I visited uh, Orlando. Um, there's a company that MEI we invested in mm -hmm. called Nestry, mm -hmm. and it's all about <sighs> neuro neuroscience and, okay. and protecting your brain and understanding the cognitive functions and then having tools to be able to work on mm. some of those deficiencies. So I did my analyst. We both did them. My yeah. analyst came back and it was like my analysis. It came back like um, when I'm under pressure. You perform the best. I, <laughs> I'm optimal, perfor yeah, optimal, optimal performance. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like. Being able to recognize that is like, okay, that gives me more confidence. Right. I'm like, damn, that's why I've been able to succeed See, so much when, man, yeah. when I'd have been through shit, when I'd have been through this adversity, motherfucker said I'd never play the game again and all of this type of stuff and, and come back and dominate or, you know, having to go, you know, having to sign to a team in week four and end up <laughs> being a starter and help yeah. them take them to the playoffs and shit like that. It's like, damn, that's pressure. I ain't had no choice. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's good to have that awareness, but like, Man, we can all attest to this. Like yeah. college, right, college football, and when you go to the league, and when the business aspect, and the That's man, awesome. that shit, it'll take the love out of the game for you if you Come let on, it. Say something smooth. It'll it's, take the love away, man. It's and it's just that every it's that everyday battle, that every year battle. Me going in year year eight now is like trying to protect it, trying to trying mm -hmm. to protect that shit because we've been playing since we were seven years old. Say, you know, right. so yeah. it's like how do we maintain that love? Yeah. You know what I'm saying throughout. It's a you know, outside of it's a lot of shit that you can't control. It's a lot and that's of business thing. decisions. One, one of the yeah. things you challenged with Smooth, I watched you deal with it, and we used to have real conversations about it. Is that, you know, you got judged a lot for celebrating, and doing the stuff that you wanted to do, but that was a part of the love for the game. Mm -hmm. That's how you did what you did. Like he been doing that since he was in high school of yeah. how he played and when he did things and that's what he enjoyed. And now all of a sudden he got to explain it. And it's like, what you, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I've been doing. That's the you know best what I'm part. And I'm right. I'm celebrating, I'm celebrating for teammates. Everybody, too. Everybody, not just Everybody. Yourself. Yeah. you going to yeah. see me. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a relationship like though. Do you, yeah. you can love the game, but are you still in love with the game? Like art right now, do y'all still in love with it or you just love it? You just getting by. No, I love the game though. Right now, like still I can love. still say, I can stay right yeah. now. I love the game. Like my favorite part of the season is the off season. Like mm. I knew as soon as I was dropping them punts and not playing as much as I wanted to in the middle of the season, I'm like, I can't wait till this off season. <laughs> I like, like it's week seven. I can, I'm knowing some. I can't wait till this off season. I know what to work on. I know how to, you know, I'm going and and trying to fix everything they said I wasn't doing. Gotcha. And now they they feeling me right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> I so feel like every year you gotta reinvent yourself though. You know? Yeah, you know? because it's always somebody trying to take your spot. Mm -hmm. You know, and for me, I'm I just turned 28, and they're like, I still got a lot of game mm -hmm. to get. I still Thanks got a lot so. of game left to give to this motherfucker. So like, <laughs> I just ain't I ain't trying to waste no time. You yeah. feel me? So that love's still there for sure. I was I want to go back to something Smooth said. That about the uh, the cognitive function. The first study I did was based on um, athletes. So the average pro athlete makes a decision in zero to four seconds. Okay. The average human being takes anywhere from forty five seconds to like ninety seconds to make a decision. And so going back to what he said, what I found out in this study was that the more moving parts because we play in control chaos. Mm -hmm. The more chaos we had, the more successful we were. Oh my goodness. Nah, and I'm like that to this day. Straight wow. up. You're tired. That's how you get tired. Yeah. I, 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 my hand, I'm in doctoral program, executive producing a film in Hollywood, just did a book deal yesterday, creating uh, uh, an entrepreneur company for my enterprise. Mm -hmm. When I don't, and this is why guys get in trouble in all season. There's nothing going on. Mm. We need things to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so even just that, just that in that insight, yeah. people don't understand. Like my manager's like, oh, this and that. I tell, dude, yeah. I have to, I have to but get see, on the move. But see, that's the key to balance, though. 
So when we talk about this thing about life, about balance, whether it's your your spirit, your health, your wealth, it's just a balance, right? To have total life prosperity. It's like, so people tell me and my family all the time, right? When you're in a relationship, you're married, you're being a father, whatever, son. They're like, hey, we don't want to deal with business, Mike. Put business, mm-hmm. Mike, up because I'm wired that way. Right. That's what I do every day. That's what I operate in. So that's my makeup, right? They playing as athletes, you know, in a way that Jay's explaining. They're making decisions like this, split decisions. You take those behaviors and bring those into your personal life with your business and financing, you're going to spend all your money on, rank, on making a decision in a split second on a watch. You're going to make a split. But instead of – it's two different things. So it's the key to balance, right? You can't carry – how do I turn that off? How do I turn off business and just be in a relationship and be like, all right, babe, you know, whatever. How well do you compartmentalize, though, Mike? That's a good question. I compartmentalize. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I don't know immediately. That so, I and the reason that. I'm asking you that, because that's how I create balance. Because okay. balance doesn't exist. Okay. It doesn't right. exist. It's just being where you are at that present exactly. moment. Exactly. Okay. Whatever I'm touching. When I'm in Focus school, I'm a student. Got you. Me yeah. with my feet or... Yeah, I will. I will tell you. I gotta give. I gotta. I gotta. I got I got to give flowers. I do have to give flowards. <laughs> this dude compartmentalized. So, like, you know, can really be this right here one minute, and then be this over here. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty consistent, probably. Like, this is who Big Mike is <laughs> on most occasions. And that's right? called that's called it, the intersectionality. And I can tell you. You should go read this called Double Consciousness by W. E. Du Bois. Say less. Shit, I know who that is, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. And he talked about the many layers and the many facets of who we are as beings, right? And that okay. intersectionality to where who you are as a black man, mm-hmm. who you are as a black man in business, who you are as a black man as an agent, who you are as a black man as a father. Man, he break this thing down, bro. It's so dope. But it's what it's what he he, he what he is. And so I think probably, and this is not a clinical analysis or anything like that, but I think for you is that it's become who you are. Right. So to get pulled out of it, it's like, oh, no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, losing yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. And for us, it creates some anxiety. It's, and for us, it's like, no, I'm all of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm in business, then it's like, when I'm with my... With it's just my knowing your place nephew. and your moment. Exactly. But it's what, what Sky said, wherever your feet are, that's where you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, that's why I asked you that. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hang out with Mike, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you be like, man, Mike, what's up, baby? Mike will give you business. <laughs> <laughs> you be like, Mike, you be like, Mike, man, come on, relax, baby. Yeah. No, 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 I'm good, I'm good. I'm just having a time. <laughs> you want to turn like, it off? Smooth, don't you say nothing. Don't right. <laughs> you say hey, nothing, don't you say hey, nothing. Hey, I'm like, nigga, I know you got some hair, you ain't got no hair, but let your hair down. <laughs> <laughs> Real, real. I got my sport coat on. Man, right, 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 right. Mike got that sport coat on, boy. It's all busy, bro. Oh, man. No, you getting some ass, Big Mike. <laughs> straight up, straight up, straight up. Like, you got to take that coat off sometimes. You do, you do. But you know what? I mean, that's the thing for me, bro. Like, they help me grow. There's that balance, right? So, like, a lot of people, like, I'm not him. Like, when he talked about earlier how people can't feed people because you're jealous or you envy, mm-hmm. that's not what God called for me in my life, mm-hmm. right? So I think I'm pretty unique and pretty good at what I do. So I don't look at someone that's good to me, close to me, and be, like, jealous or envy. Like, I'm trying to feed them to what their purpose is because I have a purpose. You know what I'm right. saying? And so it's him all, what was smooth sometimes or even Sky. They so creative. I call them, but, like, hey, man. Am I tripping or is this, is this, yeah, and how should I be this or yeah. in this space? Mike, don't be moving like this. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, yeah. it's that respect though. It's that mutual yeah. relationship. And I will say that too, you know, since we've been building, like you are like that. You are open to, to feedback. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause he'll hit me up like, yo bro, what you, you know what I'm saying? This is what, and, and I mean, and I, I think that's the uniqueness of it. It's just, you know, being open yeah. because, and, and I'll say this, man, as you age and it's difficult because there are no books and there there's no uh, manual to an aging black man mm. because there is this fear like, man, I'm losing part of myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
But I, you know, Mike said it best. I feel like we just get started. Like, I don't. Fact. When people ask me about ball, it's, it's hard for me to talk about it because I'm so far removed from it. Say but something. I'm still connected to it because yeah. I want to see these guys. And there's nothing about me. Like, you know, it's over, man. I'm 41. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I don't have, like, oh, I want to be in this moment. It's like, how can I help these guys continue to live and maximize that? And you don't see that. And that's what I love about me and Mike and, and, and how we built. Like, our conversation was what can we build together to maximize these guys' lives and their lifestyle mm -hmm. and their business. And that's that's what I love about yeah. him. But I do yeah. want him to take that sport coat off. <laughs> <laughs> it's off. It's off. Yeah. Yeah. Got Dio, got Black Dio. Oh, you know what I mean? I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for some before your eyes gear. You know what I'm saying? I got to yeah. get some. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get some of Jay Eyewear. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got some of Jay Eyewear on right now. I'm just waiting on Sky. You know what I mean? No, no that's what's the package. <laughs> <laughs> Two X, three X. No, no, I'm coming, I'm coming down. down. I'm coming down. I'm coming down, bro. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Sit up a kill, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 No, that's what's up, man. man. I appreciate the conversation. I know time is more. I can take yeah. too much of your time. But before we get out, man, individually, if y'all could tell me two things. One, this is called cosign. So I want to know who y'all cosign. Doesn't have to be an athlete. It could be an entrepreneur. It could be anybody in your family, in your life. It's somebody you cosign that you support that you feel like you want to put. You know, what I'm saying the lens on right now. And then uh, one piece of advice you give to the next, you know, uh, athlete entrepreneur coming up behind y'all. We'll start with you, Big Mike. Man, I'm going to be real. This, you know, um, you know, when you hit me and we talked about doing this, obviously I co-signed these brothers right here. You know what I'm saying? That's why they're here. I think that Jay Barnett is, um, he, bla he said he a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We can, we can see ourselves in him. He understands us. He's it's his passion. He called to it. He gifted. Uh, and then these two brothers, man, like phenomenal athletes, but they they creators. They creative minds. They students. They they leaders of people. You know. And uh, for me, like I don't want to be. Fr I mean, I go. This for me. I go deep, not wide. Mm -hmm. I don't like to have a lot of friends. I go deep, not wide. I don't want a lot of clients. I go deep, not wide. I'm not trying to invest my time in people that I don't believe in. If they gonna make great impact, and all these brothers, man, it's a blessing to you know work alongside them. Nah, that's love. That's amazing. Who we? Who I co-sign? Um, damn. Um, I would. I want. I would co-sign. I would co-sign. I co-sign my mama. Mm. Um. Mm. The reason why I'm a mama's boy, and she taught me at a young age to be very observant. Mm. Um, so I I take time when um I pay attention to okay. damn near everything. Mm -hmm. It helps me. It helps me form my thinking. It helps me um, with decision making. It helps me with. Understanding what understanding when I'm being betrayed and all of this type of shit, and I think without that foundation as as a young age, mm. I don't think I would be the man that I am today. Mm. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, what piece of advice you give to the next you know uh, entrepreneur athlete coming up behind you? Entrepreneur athlete, it's never too early to start, mm. and you can't do it alone. Mm. You have to have a team because so much of our time is ingrained in this game of being an employee, mm. you know? And in order to to operate in these different sectors, if you try to do it alone, you're not gonna optimize, you're not gonna be optimal, you know, with your bread, with your bread and butter and your gift and your passion. For sure. The last thing that I want anybody to do is waste time. So just form a team. Around mm -hmm. you, and, and, and it's okay to learn. For sure. mm -hmm. That's real. Uh, I'm going to co sign all of you brothers, man, mm -hmm. and uh, co sign you, brother, for a black man as his space, man. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I grew up with seven uncles, man. Um, as I said earlier, two of my cousins played in the league, um, uncle played in the league, uncles, uh, I had an uncle who was a pro boxer, and when my parents divorced, um, my dad has seven brothers. Mm -hmm. Not one of them like took me under their wing. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. the affinity that I have to see black men do this, man, 
is something, man, that when it first started, brother was just kind of like, you know, what you want? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> black men are not used to telling brothers, you know, they love them. Mm-hmm. And without having to give this um, disclaimer, no homo. Like, exactly. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, am I masculinity or my sexuality in question? And it's like, for me, man, I've always, you know, I don't have a, no brother, so I'm the oldest. So I've always desired to have brotherhood, especially after I left the game. So um, to, to see these young guys and just to see Mike in the space that you created, bro, like, for me, man, the most beautiful thing is uh, about this life is being able to mature. And to mature in a way where it impacts others, you know what I mean? And to see how these brothers have spoken, man. And I hope, you know, this this episode blows up for you, man, to where other young black men can look at these guys because these guys are like the uh, uh, they, they are the epitome of brothers who are more than just an athlete. For sure. You know, everybody looks at Braun, great, but you need to be looking at the Jalen's and, and the Sky because these guys <laughs> have it. But then also, you know, be looking at uh, the mics because, bro, we don't have black men that represent what we all just exuded today. Mm -hmm. We don't. I've gone all over this country and spoken about mental health, depression, suicide, man. And brothers don't have role models. Mm -hmm. And then those that are in the role that they're trying to model are not the best. So you got niggas out here that just winging it. And so we all know what you do when you no. leave it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, for sure. so I, I co-sign all of you guys, man. Um, you know, more, um, I went out sitting in therapy, man, and my therapist says, you know, uh, you're 90 years old and you're sitting on your porch. And he pushed me to go to 90 and look back. It was the hardest exercise ever. And he says, give me the moments that you live. Bro, that, that session was so intense, man. And it took me about almost a year. And this is a moment that I look back at 90, man. Because again, bro, mm. I'll give you this. It's not about your duration of time. It's about your donation. Mm. What do you do while you're here? You know, everybody talk about Dr. King left early, but the impact he left in right. 36 years. You still feel it. You got folks who live 80 years and do nothing. So for me, man, it's the impact, and, and this is just a blessing, man, to see these young cats, man, intelligent, smart, you know, cultured. But then here's the key. They're authentically themselves. For sure. that's, that's the part. They ain't trying to be like nobody else. This guy got his own style. I peeped his style. Jay got his own style. <laughs> Dope brothers, man, because we need more authenticity in this world, man. And, I mean, shoot, you, you know the music culture right now is it's, – Bishop may be watching this, so I ain't gonna cuss. <laughs> <laughs> he be watching everything I do, yeah. but uh, it's, it's, it's trash. No, for sure. So just to see these guys, man, is and I'm a black man that's aging beautifully, man. And so when I see young cats doing it, bro, I'm like, do it, black man. Yeah. Because a lot of us don't get to say that. No. Mm-hmm. We don't age. We don't age. You know, as we see, we we not living long enough to age. Mm. Nice love. What about you, Sky? Uh, yeah. So when you when you ask the question, first name that come to mind, going off of like building your team is is my cameraman, okay. Ma- Maurice Weathers. That's what's mm. up. I feel like I can. That's what. That's one dude I can really co-sign for. You know, I I feel like we've been in certain certain situations for me to do that, mm. and uh, I know his mindset. I know his vision. You know, and I and I see him build his company, Prospect Media, mm. from the ground up. You know, he. he I use him. He uses me. You know, we're we're like a, a you know a tag team, That's love. and and we, and we build off each other as we grow. And uh, yeah, I'm ba- I'm basically you know want to extend the affirmation to him, and I'm 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 proud of you know what he what he's able to accomplish and what he'll be able to accomplish moving forward. And as far as the uh, what would I tell an athlete, um, you know, trying to jump out into the entrepreneur world, I feel like I feel like yeah, like. Just always be willing to learn. Don't th- ever think you 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 mastered anything. Mm-hmm. You you're always uh my college my college my college wide receiver coach always told me like in anything you do you always wanna you're you're always approaching you're never arriving mm-hmm. you you'll never get there. Mm-hmm. Just just mm-hmm. just keep 
keep keep digging. Mm. You know, there's it's, it's never gonna be an end to to knowledge. Mm. So just always have an open mind going into things and 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 be able to accept the knowledge that's given. Man, that's love, man. I really appreciate this conversation. This is definitely gonna be a powerful episode. You guys shared a lot, transparent. We laughed, you know what I'm saying? We had a good yeah. time. Uh, I definitely want to extend the cosign to you all because, you know, you got, you guys don't have to do this platform, right? You know, we talked about helping other cheap, other people out. Like, y'all guys have a story to share, businesses as well that we're going to promote, but you could have took that story to anybody. So we're appreciative and we thankful that you guys came on this platform. Sure. Uh, so we definitely cosign y'all and want to make sure that, you know, y'all make sure y'all follow them, support, buy some merch, uh, buy a book, buy some eyewear. By, you know, yeah. <laughs> really just go in and support. You Get know? everything in. Yeah. Yeah. Tap in. Tap in. You definitely sure. tap in, man. We'll make sure we put everything in the link below so you guys can tap in. Uh, Instagram, link to the websites where you can purchase everything. One, th one thing I can say, mm. my first cousin, Frank Martin, he's a professional boxer. Mm. Uh, 17 and 0, 12 knockouts. Mm. His mom, my mom, sisters. My, my family is super talented, but... He's fighting in the 135 class. He got a fight coming up July 9th, okay. July 15th okay. in Vegas. He the next thing up, Ghost. So yeah, for right, sure. I've been hearing about bro. <laughs> I told yeah. you, yeah. my first cousin for yeah. sure. He up. That's real. Yeah, y'all tap into that too, man. Support. Uh, but as always, it's Coast Sound Life, man. We appreciate y'all. Please make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we hope y'all got some gems out of this. We'll see y'all next time.